Hey YouTube. Well, so I hinted at my previous uh, video that I had a, a video idea in mind. Not really so much an idea, but I've got a circumstance going on in my tank that I wanted to share with everybody. Uh, as my channel name suggests, my uh, I'm just an apprentice at all this and so some of these things I, you kind of learn by doing and having to go through and this is no different. So what's going on? Um, in a nutshell I first noticed a problem every time I'd add stock to the tank. Anytime I bring home a couple fish one of them inevitably died within a few days. This happened two or three times and I didn't know what was going on. Uh, I just figured that uh, from the store the, sh uh, the, the fish in their shipment was stressed or maybe there was some disease I didn't notice. Um, weakness inherent to the fish itself because looking at my tank everything's clear. I've got some of my original fish from the original stocking. Everything is in good shape. The plants are growing. So couldn't be me. In fact uh, this is a sign of some overconfidence come to find out. Many times uh, aquarium keepers uh, like myself will get a little confident with their abilities, overconfident, maybe a little arrogant. In fact, I, I can definitely attest to that. Over the last uh, month or so I've been feeling, hey man, I'm getting the hang of this. This isn't so bad and uh, you know, it's a lot of work to maintain do water changes and so what ends up happening is hey yeah I got away with two weeks before water change and then I gone, went on vacation and three weeks later my, uh, my water chemistry still was good so I can get away with three weeks well that wasn't good and I'm here to talk you through after some of my own homework of what I've learned and tell you about what is called the old tank syndrome so this is a not an uncommon problem. In fact, if you Google it, you can definitely find some good information out there. But it definitely comes with over overconfidence and a slowing down of tank maintenance to the point where thing the system starts to shut down slowly. So how do you normally notice it? Well, the first signs usually are new stock dying, and that's because you're introducing fish into a, a somewhat toxic environment and uh, they get shocked and they die. But the fish that you've got in here from the beginning have been slowly acclimating to the conditions of your tank and don't notice the problem and they swim along fine. So it keeps people kind of lulled to the circumstance that hey yeah their tank is doing fine there's nothing wrong with my tank my fish are happy. Well what's going on? what is actually happening in old tank syndrome well let me talk you through it a little bit uh, most of you are familiar with the nitrogen cycle <clears throat> and the aquarium itself is a closed system that means that nothing nothing gets in nothing is taken out the only time you add something is for food uh, and then water changes really uh, I can't think of much else other than maybe some fertilization and stuff but um, so that means even when you're through evaporation, uh, the bad chemicals and waste products are still in the tank. They still reside in the filter as well. So as the nitrogen cycle breaks down ammonia into nitrite, and then from nitrite into nitrate, nitrate is basically there and really needs to be removed through water changes. So if you're slowing down your water changes, it'll slowly creep up, and um, and it turns out that's what happened to me. In fact, it could go so far if uh, you don't if you fail to notice it that um, another system starts uh, kicking in, and that's basically the the um, buildup of um, hydrogen ions, I, I should say hydroxide ions, which will uh, which are supposed to be buffered by um, all the uh, general hardness of your tank. So basically anything that would kind of serve to buffer your pH, your acidity, to prop it up, over time the acidity will drop. So in essence, as your acidity is dropping, or I should say as your acidity is going up and your pH is dropping, um, 
this also contributes to the problem because over time, uh, as you get to pHs lower than 6, it'll actually shut down the microbial uh, activity uh, that's breaking down everything in the nitrogen cycle. So basically what can happen is you get this big crash in your tank. Now this hasn't happened to me luckily, but uh, as I'm going to show you shortly, um, I think I'm pretty close to being on the verge. So, so how did I diagnose this? Well, I basically went and just uh, got some test kits more than just my strips and I also tested my water source and compared uh, what what the differences are. So I got a little demonstration and it's it's a little bit low tech. I'm not uh, YouTube savvy to get any bunch of graphics going so uh, here we go. So here's what my tank tested at. So here's, here's a concern here. My pH is slightly acidic 6.2 um, and when I measured my tap water that I use, uh, my acidity is 6.8 to 7 neutral. So it's definitely uh, lower. And I believe that because I started looking at this a little bit early, uh, earlier than when I would normally do my water change, um, I'm, I'm suspecting that it will get even lower than that. My ammonia and nitrites are actually very good. Uh, there's none of that in, in my tank. and. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged by that because it tells me that my cycle is still going strong, but what's going on is I'm not removing my nitrates effectively. Phosphate, I didn't mention that at all, but um, that's really kind of a food for um, plants and algae. And uh, I really am not smart enough to talk about that too much right now, but that is higher than tap water. Tap water here is uh, zero phosphates. Um, and you're going to have some in, the, in your tank regardless. Uh, but I really haven't uh, gotten a handle on what the right amount is. I've seen so much uh, out there. Um, and then nitrates, here's the problem. So I measured it only about a week after my last uh, tank change, but I've been um, doing tank changes or water changes on, you know, every couple of weeks. And, and so, well, I mean, I've seen it higher than this. That's the sad thing. So uh, I, I ran it. There, I used the liquid test and I used some strips and I was getting somewhere between 20 and 60 parts per million. Um, but I think I've been seeing it even higher than that. So that's definitely a concern. So what I think I've found is that uh, I have, what I think I found basically is that uh, I, I've, I've caught it early and I just need to start uh, getting better at water changes more frequently. Here's another problem that I've been reading about is you do not want to do this uh, all too soon. So you should do this daily doing slight water changes or maybe you know anywhere 20, 10 to 20% water changes every day every other day until you get your tank parameters closer to your uh, tap water source um, because the what will happen is if you do it all of a sudden then that's a shock to all the fish that uh, are already in there. Uh, one analogy I read about on the on the internet was basically this is like alcoholism for fish. Um, you know they gradually uh, consume and consume the you know these nitrates. They're not really consuming it, but they're living in it, uh, and they can be used to it. But if you take a teetotaler and you throw and, and you throw a bunch of booze at that uh, teetotaler all at once, it's it can be severely uh, toxic to that individual. So. Um, it's kind of like taking them out of it and going cold turkey the other direction and I guess that's supposed to stress them too and so you want to be careful not to do everything at once and just to gradually rescue your tank so that's really kind of the uh, setup and I hope to give you some updates in the next week or two about how how things have improved um, with that I gotta get to work and get some water change done and uh, I'll talk to you all later